Welcome back to 60 Miles From Anywhere. Today I'm going to talk about the problem that many of us face. Not just creatives, but anybody who's ever wanted to push out of their comfort zone. I'm here to talk about getting out of your own way. If you like this episode, please check out my website, 60milesfromanywhere.com, where you can find many more stories on my blog, as well as insights about creative writing. My fiction is available on Amazon.com, and if you click on the link on my website, 60milesfromanywhere.com, the book is called Song of the Sender, and it's available in both trade paperback and ebook for Kindle as well. It makes a great holiday gift or birthday present for that lover of fantasy, alternate history, or horror in your life. Your donations support this podcast and my website are always appreciated with my Buy Me a Coffee link on my website. Be sure to leave a rating or a comment on the platform you're subscribed to. Ratings and comments help improve my rankings on platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and many others. I'm several episodes deep into my podcast now, and it feels great. Granted, the numbers aren't up to what I'd hoped yet, but I'm still in the early beginnings. Right now, it can't be about numbers anyway. The metric of success for me is just putting in the work. I'm doing something new and discovering I really like what I'm doing, regardless of being able to assign a measurement to it. There's no 401k or profit sharing or dental. It's just a cloud of dust forming into something else. I sat down once with a psychologist who told me something very bluntly and to the point. Do you know what your problem is? You need to get out of your own fucking way. How do I do that, I asked. Should I do cognitive behavioral therapy or something? No, you need to wake up. You need to go live in a monastery on the side of a mountain with some fucking monks for a while. He was a very sweary psychologist. When I was in college, I spoke with a singer-songwriter who made a modest living off of her records. She did the road circuit. She traveled from town to town, hitting universities and coffee shops, just sitting in front of a crowd, playing her songs. She got lucky at one point and sold one of her songs to Reba McIntyre, who recorded it for a movie. This woman was getting royalties, but just enough to help her with traveling expenses. She had a whole case of CDs she was selling at the end of shows to us poor college kids. Most people just walked by without buying anything. When I talked to her, she said that the people who love you will support your dream. She said she always hit up her family and friends whenever she released new music and they bought her albums. I was happy for her because she did have a community that was so invested in her and did come out with their support. She was lucky. Not everyone is that lucky. Sometimes people get really excited about a project they're working on and the people in their life just give them a shrug and say, good luck making any money with that. At that point, you have to go beyond your first tier of support. And you know your family bet. Not everyone can expect overwhelming support. For many of us, you'd probably find that kind of support after you became a success. When you started getting emails or phone calls from aunties and cousins you haven't heard from in years. College roommates who probably had to look up your name just to make sure they were spelling it right. That might sound pretty cynical, but it does happen. Sometimes the people in our lives are only paying attention if they want to watch us fall. At that point, you have to move past the comfort zone of giving a damn what they think at all. It's the strangers I've found that are the most honest. Not that seeking approval from strangers is all that healthy, but sometimes your biggest fan is somebody you've never met. Someone who doesn't see you in that place on their shelf. And when you rise higher, they don't get irritated that you dared to get out of your place. Sometimes the worst person doing that to you is yourself. When I was growing up, my whole family lived in the shadow of one man. My great-grandfather started a number of businesses, mostly in the trucking industry, which at the time was beginning to replace trains as highways were improving. Refrigeration was developed, and people were spreading out into new places throughout the United States. He came across an opportunity, and he was met with success. His success story wasn't much different than anybody else's. It wasn't any more miraculous than someone who had started a business and was able to pay their employees. He retired in his 60s and moved with my great-grandma to Arizona. Since then, however, my family has lauded him as some kind of captain of industry. In a way, he set a high watermark that nobody so far has been able to surpass. I think if he were alive today, he would be very disappointed in all of them. 
just living off a faded success story with no other ambition in their lives because he built something and they feasted off of it for a couple generations until it was nothing but bones. So anytime someone in my family comes up with something they wanted to do, they were reminded of his successes and good luck doing better than that, even though the fortune he built is long gone now. That's generational thinking of getting in your own way. Almost as though, who am I to pass that limit? Such audacity, such arrogance. Stay down at the bottom where it's safe, because when you fail, everyone is just going to remind you that you weren't him, and you never will be. Sometimes it's the people in your life that aren't supportive. Your spouse might not believe in you. Your own family might snicker about what you were doing at family dinners when you're out of the room. Your friends might check in on you to see if you failed yet. These aren't good people. The first step in getting out of your own way is to stop keeping people in your life that are happy to help you get in your own way. We can be tempered by criticism, but we shouldn't be ruled by it. In a weird way, I am living in a monastery on the side of a mountain now. I'm 60 miles from anywhere, after all. When I work, it's because I have willed myself to take that step and work. When I fail, it's because of my own decisions. I don't have anyone but myself to blame now. I have full accountability. It took a while to realize just how much that sucks. That it didn't matter as much of what my ex-wife or extended family or friends or my kids thought of me. What mattered was my ability to push past my own insecurities and walls that I built to keep myself safe. Not only from criticism, because if you never tried, you can't fail, right? But also from success and the resentment you might get from people in your life who didn't want you to help better yourself. People who would loathe you for finding a little bit of happiness when they themselves are miserable bastards. After all, taking a risk like this might mean you are alone. Either your attempt at success will alienate you, or actual success will cost you the people in your life. Honestly, the genuine people in your life aren't going anywhere. You will lose the fakes and the people who hate you for finding happiness. It takes a lot of time for you to realize this, but those people aren't good for you anyway. I'm just beginning to learn how to get out of my own way. Some days are harder than others. There are plenty of times when I just don't want to get out of bed in the morning, or I rely on that dopamine drip of scrolling through social media. That kept me going through the last five years of my day job, so much to the point that my actual duties and responsibilities were secondary. It created some really bad habits, much like an alcoholic who just works enough to not be fired, and well enough so they can be drunk throughout the day and it doesn't impact their performance reviews. I found I was working for the internet connection and being left alone most of the time. Now I scroll the apps for some kind of affirmation because doing the work can be scary. It's not going to be perfect. It's probably not going to get me any wealth or fame. And that lizard brain of mine says I'll probably starve before it starts paying the bills. But when I just let myself fall and get into a creative state, I feel right. I feel like my past and my life has purpose and meaning. I feel like it doesn't matter so much what other people think. I'm creating something. I'm serving as a conduit to a higher power. The words are coming from someplace, and it's just my job to express them. It's a calling of sorts. For a brief moment, when I'm creating a story or recording a podcast or traveling to a new place, I am getting out of my own way. Listen, I might talk a good game here, but I have that feeling of getting out of my own way for only about an hour a day if I'm lucky. That's increased for maybe a minute or less before. It's like a muscle, and it only gets stronger the more you work at it. My perfectionism has a lot to do with that, too. The need to do something perfect is more about how others see how you do it than how it really feels. Knowing it's not going to be perfect on your first attempt is liberating. If people laugh at you for attempting to do something, fuck them. My perfectionism has only ever held me back. I keep thinking of those kinds of naysayers in my life and how it was a crutch. I could blame them for being critical. When I had made the decision to accept their criticism, they had won, and I had lost. Losing my perfectionism has allowed me to be less rigid and more creative. I don't get frozen up as much anymore when I just think, 
I'm going to jump into this and see what happens. My expectations from things being perfect never measure up to the effort put into making something perfect either. And that just makes everything brittle. When things aren't perfect, little glass sculptures, they aren't fragile. They can take some hits and they can keep growing. Sometimes the art comes from the act of just doing it. A blank canvas represents the potential for something beautiful to appear. But as the artist, it's up to you to start putting the paint on it. It's going to suck at first, but you're going to get better. And you can do it as many times as you want to get it right. You are the only one stopping yourself from dipping your brush into the paint and putting down the first brush stroke. A blank canvas is not perfect. A blank canvas is unrealized potential. The lie we tell ourselves is that we can't fail if we never try. The last time I checked today, my podcast has 74 downloads. If I keep doing this, I might be surprised in a year how many I've gotten, and almost embarrassed at the thought that that was a lot. I might shake my head and think, you really didn't have a lot of faith in your ability, did you? I'd like to think that the person I'm looking back at will still love and appreciate the person I am now, who is so nervous to even put that first episode up, not knowing what direction the effort would take him in. I'm trying to find that understanding that any step is progress in taking me to new places. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. The music today and the intro and the outro are supplied to me by an old garage band that I was in back in college called Dog Eye. I hope you enjoy it, Um, and uh, just slowly building this whole podcast has been a challenge and it's been a lot of fun. Again, thanks for listening.